Hey everybody, Becky Kilimnik here, not having coffee because it's three in the afternoon and it seems like a really bad idea. I wanna talk about the difference between perspective drawings and isometric drawings. We can't talk about isometric drawings without first talking about technical illustration. What is technical illustration? or engineering drawing, or drafting, or archeological illustration, or scientific illustration, or blah, 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 blah. Technical illustration is the art and science of conveying factual, useful information through accurate instructional drawing. These drawings show details and views that cannot be captured through photography. And in many cases, these drawings have to be created in such a way that they can be easily photocopied. Eek! Right? Different needs call for different styles and formats within technical illustration. However, there are the same views that tend to show up regardless of the type of illustration that you need to do. Those views are the front view, the side view, the top view or bottom view, the cross-section view, <laughs> my favorite, the exploded view, and of course, the isometric view. Ooh, what is an isometric view, you ask? Well, it's kind of like a perspective view, but it isn't. So let's talk a little bit about perspective so we can see what isometric isn't, shall we? Once upon a time, artists didn't do a very good job with perspective. If you look at European medieval paintings, you'll see that some artists were trying. They were making things in the background a little bit smaller than things in the foreground, but it wasn't quite right. And then around 1420, the architect Filippo Brunelleschi began designing the dome for the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Flower, otherwise known as the Florence Cathedral. According to accounts of his biographer, Brunelleschi stood in front of the baptistry of the cathedral, which is octagonal, lots of lines, and drew the edges of the baptistry onto a mirror. Then he extended the edges of those lines beyond what was actually visible to view. When he did so, he recognized that all the lines converged in one point, the vanishing point. One point perspective had been discovered or rediscovered if you maintain that earlier cultures had probably already figured this out before Renaissance Europeans, but it had all been lost if that's the case. And then a few years later, some guy who went by Alberti compiled all of Brunelleschi's findings into a manual using technical illustration and Latin and then later Italian so that all artists would have access to this wonderful discovery and can incorporate perspective into their own works. So now we have a clear scientific understanding of why things get smaller when they're farther away and how to properly represent the convergence of those things onto one point or two points in two point perspective or three points in three point perspective. But that's like advanced drawing. We're not getting to that today, class. So this is why when you look at an isometric drawing, it might look a little bit off because isometric drawings represent three dimensions without a vanishing point. With an isometric drawing, you're able to see three sides of an object at once, unlike the one-sided drawing of many of the other technical illustration views. Imagine an XYZ grid where each axis is at a 30 degree angle from where you're standing. The three sides of the isometric drawing each rest along this 30 degree angle. So you are able to see all three sides equally. No perspective, no vanishing point, means you're able to see all information clearly with no chance of losing or diminishing or misinterpreting information because it's farther away. But no perspective, no vanishing point, also means that to your trained artistic eye, isometric views look a little off. They look like they were drawn wrong or the back of the object is actually getting bigger. It really does mess with your mind a little bit and takes some getting used to. However, once you come to understand the value of isometric drawings and you understand how to create them accurately, they can be very powerful representations that can convey a lot of very useful information in all forms of technical illustration. I hope this was helpful in clearing up exactly what isometric views are. For more on information design, visual storytelling, technical illustration, and web development, please check out my blog at theconceptspot.com 
slash blog. And now I'm gonna go get some coffee.